The BitTrip series originally consisted of six games, releasing between 2009 and 2011. Coming out on WiiWare, they were all based around the idea of rhythmic gameplay and used a retro aesthetic. The games were BitTrip Beat, Core, Void, Runner, Fate and Flux. BitTrip Runner holds the personal distinction of being one of the first digital games I ever purchased, and all six games are now being re-released on the Nintendo eShop in about a week's time. Does this runner still have the stamina, or is it power walking at best? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. BitTrip Runner, as the title would imply, is an endless runner. You play as Commander Video, who must make it from one end of a level to the other. You cannot stop running and must instead use a limited number of moves that will unlock as you go in order to avoid obstacles and get to the end in one piece. The first and most basic of these moves is a jump performed by pressing A. Early levels will see you jumping over enemies or obstacles and each move you make will add to the game's soundtrack and we'll talk more about this later. What also adds to the soundtrack is collecting the power-ups which build the beat of the music further. Collecting these will also add to your score. There are further collectibles in the form of gold bars, and if you do manage to collect all of these within a level, you will be transported to a bonus level at the end of the stage. Getting some of these will take a lot of skill, as the placement tempts you to make a move that will put you at risk of death in order to try and reach them. As well as that jump, then new moves are introduced as I said, such as a slide, a kick and the ability to use springs that catapult you through the air. Once you have unlocked these, the game truly reveals its hand as effectively being a rhythm game as well as an endless runner. Memorising the attacks of the enemies or obstacles and subsequently knowing which of your moves to use at the precise moment is the only way to advance, and failing to do so will mean instant death. Whilst later games in the Runner series did introduce level checkpoints, there is no such luxury here, and whilst I know this sounds hideous, well there's no dressing it up, it is hideous, but it's also incredibly compelling, knowing you must be perfect on every level to get through. This is helped massively by the fact that you respawn almost instantly after dying. The developers were smart enough to realise that a death loading screen is the moment where a gamer will consider quitting. Without one, you almost feel obligated to try again, and try again you will, many times. You'll die just as many, but the setup is so simple and incredibly slick that you'll be sucked in and hours can potentially pass before you realise. Whilst most levels are pretty short, some of them are quite long, and to be honest this is my biggest gripe with the game. On the short levels, everything the game does works brilliantly, but the longer ones do show the flaws in terms of the lack of checkpoints a little too much. These long levels feel like difficulty spikes, when in reality they aren't necessarily any more difficult, they just go on so long that the window of opportunity for a mistake is much larger, and silly mistakes will start to creep in out of frustration. Levels are organised into worlds and each world ends with a boss battle. These are no exception, one hit and you will need to start again, and you will die in these to begin with as you learn the patterns. That's the other frustrating part of the game. Sometimes death does feel inevitable because you just don't know what's coming next, and whilst good reflexes can negate this a fair bit of the time, sometimes you'll just have to die, digest what happened, play through the level or boss again, and hope to counter the move next time with the new knowledge you have. The game does make a point of telling you when you start that this is BitTrip Runner in its original form and that it's very hard, which I found quite amusing, and they have actually added both an easy and a hard mode, which I'm pretty sure were not in the original, I may be wrong there, it's been a while. I tried a level on easy mode to see what the difference was, and in all honesty, I couldn't really notice one. There must be something, but it just felt a bit more like a placebo effect than anything else. What does help tremendously though, is just how smooth and responsive the controls are. The button layout is pretty much spot on, with the only change I would have liked possibly being swapping the kick command from X to B, and it's a shame there isn't a way to customise the controls. Even so, you are always in control, and death is never down to a control issue. As well as the story mode, there is a challenge mode, and this gives you a set of difficult levels with the aim of getting as many points as possible. This means getting all gold bars, so even if you do complete the level, if you didn't get all of them, you will fail. Curiously though, some of the times, there aren't any gold bars to get, and these levels are therefore much easier. Gameplay is one of the most pure and adrenaline pumping experiences you can have, and although some sequences that go on too long can certainly cause frustration, the sheer joy of eventual success does outweigh this. It gets 16 out of 20. Controls are kept simple and do everything they need to do to aid the player in what is a very difficult game, and they get 19 out of 20. When it comes to the visuals, BitTrip Runner uses a mix of 2D and 3D graphics to very good effect. 
Commander Video himself is a 2D sprite, aiming to replicate the crude look of an Atari mascot with his blocky style and lack of colour. The same can be said for some of the stages in terms of the items you pick up, with all of them having a classic sprite look to them. The stages themselves though, focus on 3D, while still emphasising the use of sprites and pixels for foreground dangers and features, leading to a voxel-like aesthetic which blends wonderfully with the 2D pixel art. The use of very bold but limited colours just accentuates the retro look further still. Talking of the retro look, the bonus levels have been created in a faux Atari 2600 style. I will say the retro look can make it a bit difficult to read the font at times, plus with only three worlds and the visual style only changing between each world, there isn't a huge amount of variety. Audio wise, the music and more specifically the way the music is used is one of the highlights of the game. Each level begins with a basic chip tune, and as I mentioned earlier, each item you collect or action you take will add to this basic soundtrack. When you collect the power up so, the beat of the music grows a little stronger, evolving away from pure chip tune to become something more powerful. Grabbing all of the power ups within a level will evolve the music to its fullest and I never tire of listening to this evolution as the level goes on. My main complaint about the music would be that it doesn't feel as if there's enough of it, with each evolution sounding quite similar to the last. I most certainly never tire of it, because it's just so good I wanted more. Visuals are a great blend of 2D and 3D, and the game really does pop. They belie their basic look, although a lack of variety does hurt the game to an extent, and they get 15 out of 20. Audio takes this evolution of style a step further and becomes a major part of the game, and I just wish there was a bit more of it. It scores 19 out of 20. Bitrip Runner costs £4.49, $4.99 or €4.99 or seven Australian dollars 49 It will take up 225 megabytes of your system storage. There is 20% off this in the US only until the 24th of December, although in other regions you can get a discount for buying more than one of the games in the series. Once you get into it and become more proficient at the game, you can whiz through the levels, and with three worlds of 12 levels, one of those being a boss fight, technically it can be beaten in a few hours. However, most people will become stumped on certain levels for quite a while. Levels 1 to 10 on World 1 took me a combined total of about 20 minutes, whereas level 11 alone took me about 45. There are of course also the challenges to attempt, and the lure of trying to get all of the gold bars on every level is very strong. We'll have to compile a list of the best games available on the eShop for £5 or less at some point, but spoiler alert, this one will be right up near the top, and value scores 18 out of 20. To conclude, Bitrip Runner holds up incredibly well 10 years after its original release. Yes, the sequels have added bells and whistles, yes they have added checkpoints, the lack of which in this release you will lament at times, and yes, you could theoretically blast through it in just a few hours, but when it clicks and you are dodging a variety of dangers at a split second's notice, with the vibrancy of the retro look popping and the chip tune developing as you play, it's hard to deny that this is still one of the most pure and exciting experiences you can get for less than a fiver as well, let's not forget. Yeah. Just one word of warning though, you do have to be up for the challenge. Bitrip Runner gets a switch up score of 87%. Thank you everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed that review, please do remember to leave a like if you did, it's always nice when one of these games comes back from the past and holds up just as well. Please do let me know in the comments section which of the BitTrip games was your favourite from back in the day, or intrigues you now if you've never played them. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.